Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Electronics Media. Today in this video, I'm going to explain about the FIFO depth calculation with the randomization of clock cycles. So in my previous video, I have explained about the you know FIFO depth calculation with the no idle cycle and with the idle cycle inserted between the write and the read. So here, uh, uh, with the randomization, I'm going to uh, you know explain uh, uh, the FIFO depth calculation. So so let's take this example. So in the writes, what we are doing is we are trying to write 80 uh, bytes of data for per 100 clock cycle and um, for the read we are trying to read 8 bytes of data per 10 clock cycle so now if you observe the right side and the read side like you know it kind of a ratio is uh, is the same so do we need the fifo first of all uh, we, uh, uh, and uh, we want to transfer a 100 bytes of data so do we need a fifo so the answer is yes because here uh, we are considering 80 uh, the randomization of 20 clock cycles okay if you see um, there can be 20 clock cycles of randomization so that means um, your data may, may be consistently it continuously might be writing or it is possible that it's uh, uh, some 10 bytes of data it might be writing and taking one clock cycle or a two clock cycle you know idle cycle in between like that any kind of randomization can be possible so with, when, uh, with that in mind so we need to uh, analyze what are the different possible uh, scenarios that we usually encounter so let's understand one by one so okay so now first case okay so in the first case what happens uh, assume uh, this is a um, my data okay this is my data so what i'm doing uh, this is my zero this is 20 so uh, this is a idle cycle first okay and then um, this is a total what we want to write is uh, you know uh, uh, 160 bytes of data okay so that means here uh, 20 clock cycle idle window and then i'm uh, uh, writing uh, uh, 80 bytes of data okay so that means uh, here data i'm writing so this will be 100 so that begins 80 data we are writing right so total so that's why it's 100 now uh, again here it can be next one is can be idle so this is 120 so again 80 bytes of data we are writing so this is 200 so if you see how many clock cycles total we are taking for you know writing 160 bytes of data because here 80 bytes of data we are writing and then the 80 bytes of data so uh, then total it becomes 160 bytes of data and we are taking total 200 clock cycles 200 nanosecond assume it's a 200 uh, nanosecond just i'm taking example or it's a 200 clock cycle okay second one so in the second one what we are doing we are interchanging this okay so what we will do is first we will write uh, 80 bytes of data okay and then we will take a idle cycle so this is 0 this is 80 this is 100 this is uh, 180 and then this is uh, 200 so now here uh, 80 bytes of data and this is the idle so now you see how for the you know uh, for the right right like you know for uh, 160 bytes of data how many clock cycles are we taking so here if you see here 80 are there okay here written and then there's idle so that's a total 100 uh, clock cycle and then again in the next uh, 80 clock cycle you're writing all the 80 data so that means it becomes so if you see it's a 180 nanoseconds or 180 clock cycles okay here because here itself your you know right has ended so this uh, idle cycle we will ignore because you already have written the 160 bytes of data now the third case so here what we are doing uh, uh, here idle data idle data uh, this one so now here it can be uh, assume this is a idle and then data you are writing okay so this is a 0 20 this is 100 and then uh, here again we are writing a data okay then this is uh, 180 and this is 200 this is idle so if you uh, carefully observe here 80 bytes of data i am writing out here okay and 80 bytes of data i'm writing out over here so now if you see effectively we are just taking 
160 clock cycles itself to write all 160 by, uh, you know bytes of data. So here that I'm going to write as 160 nanosecond. Okay. Now the fourth case could be you are uh, you know uh, writing uh, 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 80 bytes of data and then idle and then idle and then data this is the fourth case so here if you see um, here again uh, it takes all the 200 clock cycles okay so this is the 200 clock cycles it's going to take or a 200 nanosecond okay and in the fifth case it's all uh, you know completely randomized so it is possible that you know you will have a uh, uh, some uh, 10 junks of data and then 10 clock cycles some two clock cycles of uh, you know idle window like that you can have all the possible combinations okay so that but that will still take a 200 nanosecond itself okay with that possible so this is possible or it can be some low also but just saying it will be uh, this one so if you see uh, in order to calculate the FIFO depth, okay, so you need to consider the worst case. Worst case means when the write is at the full phase and the read is at the slower side. Okay, so that means uh, if you see uh, in all of these five possible combinations, so at 160 nanosecond, here, right, this is the one where you are trying to write all the data, okay, at the less clock cycle. At less number of or a lower number of clock cycles, you are trying to write all the data. So this is the case what we have to consider for the FIFO depth. So now uh, we'll uh, try to do the calculations. So it's again the calculation is the uh, same. So basically, what we are doing in uh, uh, this is our data rate and all so that is mentioned so essentially for in the worst case whatever we took so that's the right side is the highest right so that time what we're doing so here in 160 clock cycles we are uh, you know uh, writing 160 bytes okay but in the read side if you see what we are doing here uh, we are reading out uh, uh, in 10 clock cycles we are reading 8 bytes of data okay so in a total of 160 clock cycles how much data we are going to read so in a total of 160 clock cycles how much data we are going to read so x is equals to it's a 160 into 8 by 10 which is equals to uh, 128 so this is the uh, you know uh, number of uh, data that you can be uh, that it can be read in 160 clock cycles so now so what is the FIFO depth now so uh, this is the FIFO depth equals to here in 160 clock cycles you are reading uh, 160 bytes of data but in the same 160 clock cycle you are reading uh, 128 so that means effectively it's a 160 minus 128 equals to 32 so this is the depth of the FIFO that you need. Okay, so this is the depth of the FIFO you need. So here, this uh, you know um, the concept you should remember is how many, uh, what are the possible combinations that you can form, and it should be always that the worst case scenario to be taken. So worst case means the right side has to be a faster pace, and the right side should be on a slower one. So with that in mind, so you have to calculate the FIFO depth and the depth, uh, the calculation is uh, you know, straightforward. There is not complex one and our, you don't have to remember any formula for this. Uh, this question is a kind of, a, you know, in, uh, you know many, in many interviews, many people have asked the same exact questions. Okay. Even when I was in, a, uh, when I was attending the interviews, right. So that time also people had asked me the same question. I was unable to answer, but with uh, some hints and all, I was, it was possible that, you know, I was able to answer this, but it's a, like, you know, it's. It's a kind of understanding uh, you need because all of the f cases you need to form and then you have to under uh, take the, the worst case scenario. With the help of that, so you'll be able to solve the, the FIFO depth calculations. Um, now, uh, uh, so I hope all of my like, you know, pre the previous video and this video uh, together let me you know covers all of the you know possible scenarios of the you know different uh, questions that can be formed related to this FIFO depth calculation. I hope this information is uh, clear and uh, useful to you guys. 
please do let me know in the comment section if you have any queries i'll be happy to help thank you